What's up guys, it's your boy Paul and I'm back with you and we're gonna talk about the Narnia series with the Christian perspective. Now I know about C.S. Lewis and his many writings on Christianity. One of my favorite books is Mere Christianity and I've just downloaded a couple on my audio app to check it out. So it's not any kind of surprise to find out that these movies have so much of a Christian's teachings packed into them. These movies are great and they have so much packed into them and that's just the action, the adventure, the fantasy, the drama, and the comedy from the movie themselves. Choose your last words carefully, Talmarine. They were great films. Now I heard the third movie, Voyage of the Dawn Trader, was not nearly as good as the book and a lot of people really hated that one for that, but for me, I thought it was great because uh, I really wasn't influenced by the greatness of the books because I haven't read them, them themselves. I think these movies offer so much to the human condition. We have stories of bravery in face of danger. There are these themes of sacrifice, especially the great sacrifice of Aslan that typifies or represents the death of Jesus for the sins of the world. There are themes of greed and betrayal, but to me, there were two themes that stuck out above all else. And with conversations with people about life and others about the gospel, these two just continued to come up. The first was about Eustace, one unlikely hero, and the second was one of the biggest to me, and that was from Edmund. Let me start with Eustace. Eustace was a pretty despicable little dude, man, at the beginning of the movie. You helped me against my will, huh? Did I? In one of us, say the most unhygienic quarters, it's like, a, it's like a zoo down there. He's quite the complainer, isn't he? He's just warming up. He was just a bad kid. He made me angry, man. But as, as the ventures with his cousins, his attitude in life, they changed. And at his farewell to Reaper Cheap, I was close to tears, man, because it was such an enduring scene, man. Will I not see you again, ever? What a magnificent puzzle you are. It has been my honor to fight beside such a brave warrior, a great friend. This change was endured by fire though. So the first thing I want to say is I love through Eustace's example is that God uses our evil to accomplish his glory and our good. That's in Romans by the way. Eustace's greed when they, when they got to the island and it, and it turned him into a dragon and because he was a dragon he was able to pull the boat to the island where the swords was needed returning and the curse would be broken. By tonight they may well eat them. Oh, do we hit? Eustace, that's brilliant. Now I'm not going to say that Prince Caspian and his crew wouldn't have made it to the island without him, but clearly from the aspect of the movie this was a significantly easier travel because of what Eustace was able to do with his strength as a dragon. To me this is a powerful thing. You see, because, because of Eustace's sin, he was transformed into a dragon, which he definitely would not have been, and he definitely didn't like because it was a punishment for his sin. But through that discipline, he was able to be better equipped to help them on the island. And that's awesome, man. But there's more than that. Because he was a dragon, he learned bravery. Strength comes from inside, and even when a dragon, uh, uh, he was a scaredy cat. But Reaper Chief helped him to realize his power. But not only that, he could be brave because he was a big dude, but that bravery comes from character in the heart. I am a mouse. You're a dragon. You've got skin like chainmail. You breathe fire. Come on, let's meet our destiny. So Eustace learned great bravery from his friend. And the last part that makes my heart just smell from the dragon saga is Eustace gained a family and a dear friend because of what he went through. When Eustace was turned into a dragon, Reaper Chief was there to comfort him and through that, and through that time, they became like eternal friends. Extraordinary things only happen to extraordinary people. Maybe it's a sign that you've got an extraordinary destiny, something greater than you could have imagined. That's why I got so choked up at the end, when I, uh, uh, cause when at the beginning, you see that Eustace had such disdain for Reaper Chief, but in the end, he cared so much. They both cared so much about each other. Eustace was sad that, that he would never see him again. It just made my heart swell up when I heard that. So I want to say that God uses our sin, our evil, to bring about great things for his glory and our good. It reminds me that when I'm sad from the sin and the evil that I've committed in the past, which I should be sad about, I am reminded though that those things help to bring me to where I am now. I wouldn't have the compassion I have for people if it wasn't for the intensity of the cruelty I had shown in the past. 
And I wouldn't even have met my wife, whom I love and live with today, if the time wouldn't have passed because of my sin. So God does make even sin bring him glory in my life better. So I ain't gonna look and, and do, I ain't gonna look do wrong because God is so great. But I just remember that that time, just like Eustace of being a dragon wasn't fun, but it turned out for my good. Which just kind of goes along with Edmund's story. That was a powerful one as well. In the beginning of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, I was super angry at Edmund. It's like, why are you turning on your brothers and sisters, bro? When you know the evil queen, bro, she evil. You basically betraying your family for nothing, man. I was so mad. They're in the little house of the dam with the beavers. Well, I suppose you're not a total loss then. Could I maybe have the small taggish the light now? But when he came back and was forgiven and loved and trusted, he became a better dude. But ever since that movie, there, there's always been something about Edmund. He takes all temptations seriously. In the second movie, when the witch comes back to tempt both Prince Caspian and King Peter, Guess who was the one who uh, put the sword in the in the witch? Edmund. I know. He knew there ain't no playing around with temptation. He knew that what it has to take in order to fall, and he didn't want to do that again. And in the third movie, when, when the witch was trying to tempt him, he again, he pulled out a sword quickly and knew he had to slay her before she whispered any words because temptation is so alluring. Edmund, come with me. Join me. That just reminds me of what I must do when temptation comes. We must be ready because the lion is seeking to devour. I must be on guard. Temptation is serious and I must take it as serious as it is. Edmund never played around with temptation. He was always on guard because he knew what was at stake, the trust of his family. So he wasn't playing around. He knew the power and he knew the cost. I think that is something we should learn from Edmund. It's not to play with temptation and sin because sin is power and sin costs lots. These movies were awesome and I hope to check out the books as well. There are, I think, four more stories in the Chronicle. I know they are supposed to be developing uh, uh, more on screen adaptations, but, but if I'm gonna uh, know what's about to go down, I gotta read the books. So let me know what you think and uh, on what impressed upon you from watching these movies or films or reading the book. What themes or stories do you see that have impacted you? I would love to read them in the comments. If you like this video, man, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if it's your first time checking uh, me out, man, uh, go and look at some other videos in the library and see if it's worth it to put on a subscribe and hit that noty bell. And if it is, I'd appreciate it. So uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate the time and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day. Keep watching them movies.